All right, guys, so for today's tutorial, I actually want to talk about creating seamless textures in Procreate without the help of any other application. This could be a huge help whenever you're trying to create multiple products with the same design. Because as you know, an all printed t-shirt probably has a different size of canvas than an all printed towel. And that goes on and on. And if you're trying to sell multiple products on your store, having a seamless texture that can be adaptable to any size of canvas is for sure a huge help. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get to it. All right guys, just before we start, a bit of a disclaimer here on creating this texture. We are going to be creating a square texture here in Procreate and that's what's going to allow us to create a tileable texture. However, it really will depend on the model of the iPad that you have in order for you to create the biggest square that you can. What I mean by that is that, for example, for my iPad, which is not the latest iPad Pro model, I believe is the second generation iPad Pro, 12.9 inches, it, would, it allows me to create a maximum, I think my biggest size canvas that I can create is somewhere around 8,500 pixels or maybe 8,250 pixels, I'm not really, really sure. But I really don't want to create a 8,000 by 8,000, for example, canvas because for the purposes of this video, we need to be able to then recrop at a certain point in our, in our lesson here, we're going to be expanding the canvas and we're going to be taking a look if the texture is working, if the texture is actually tileable or not. So for the purposes of this lesson, we're going to be creating a 3000 by 3000 square canvas with the ability to be able to recrop it to 6000 by 6000. And I'm hoping that the screens that I'm putting on right now can really uh, try to explain a little bit more visually what I'm trying to convey here. So as long as you create a canvas that you can actually expand to at least see a half of it on each side, you're going to be good to go. So now back into the lesson, let's create a canvas that is about 3000 by 3000. And what we're going to be creating here is a texture that looks like this. It's kind of like a lemon kind of seamless texture. So something very simple. There's just a little bit of a variation between the lemons they were creating. And I just wanted to create something simple this time. And if this video does really well, we can go a little bit more complex with our designs. So now that we have our 3000 by 3000 canvas, the very first step is to get our very fine line. So get a brush and just make it a very small kind of size brush with maximum opacity. And we're going to draw a line on every corner of our canvas. So we're just going to be drawing these very straight lines. And basically we're creating the box where we're creating the guides that will guide us for the size of this canvas. Also make sure to use the quick shape tool and tweak the Bezier curves so that you make sure that these lines are really running at the corners of your canvas and also that these, these lines are very straight. So now for step two, we're going to go into the actions menu and we're going to go into the canvas section and then tap on crop and resize. Now that we're here, we're going to first click on this link here at the bottom, which will allow us to add one number and, multi and add that same number to the other side of our square canvas. So for example, here we have 3000 by 3000. If I put 4000, it will, it will automatically add 4,000 as the height as well. And we're also going to make sure that resample canvas is turned off. And why is that? Well, basically, if we have that option on, once we resize our canvas, Procreate will also scale up or resize our artwork. And we don't want that. We actually want to have some space on all sides of our canvas because that's how we're going to start creating our seamless texture. And I'll explain that a little bit better as we get through with this lesson. So now let's just add that number of 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. You'll see that you probably need to actually reposition your artwork because for some reason Procreate adds that number to the bottom right corner of the screen. So you can just zoom out and just make sure to reposition the canvas using the guides that the canvas actually gives you. Make sure to zoom in. And now also because we have those lines, those very fine lines that we drew to make sure that we have the box of our canvas, we're going to make sure to line up the canvas, the new canvas. So the guides have to line up perfectly with the corner of our canvas. So make sure that the canvas is basically centered. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, as you can see here, as the canvas is very centered onto the new one, we're going to hit done. We have our texture in the center and now we have half of a texture up, down, on all the sides, basically on all the corners. 
So now that that's done, we're going to move on to step number three, which is to create our hero lemons as separate artwork. So just really at the center of the screen, just start creating the elements. In this case, in this lesson, we're going to be creating these lemons. And once again, I just added a little bit of a texture uh, difference inside these lemons just to add a little bit more of a visual interest to the seamless texture so that the lemons are not completely perfect and we only have one copy of these lemons. So I've added maybe two or three different copies. So now that we have these three heroes, it's all about starting to position them. And I'm going to start positioning them uh, probably around the bottom and then to the left side as well. So basically start filling in the corners of our texture. As I get that done, well, what we want to do, of course, is to save the original lemons as separate layers that are turned off, so our copies are always saved as backups. And now all the other copies that we're creating and pasting around the texture, we're going to be merging them so that we can have quick access in terms of copying and pasting the, uh, these sections elsewhere. What I mean by that is now we're going to take the selection tool and we're going to make sure that it's set to rectangle. So now that it's set to rectangle, we're going to first select the left side of our texture. So now we're going to select that section on the left side, whatever is bleeding out of the square. We're going to use our three finger swipe to actually cut the pixels and paste it onto a new layer. And why are we cutting these pixels? Well, one is that we actually don't need them. We don't need any artwork that's falling out of the 3000 by 3000 cage. And now we're going to paste that on the right side of the square, but inside of the artwork, which means we are already creating a perfect tileable image by pasting whatever is on the left side on the inside of the right side, by then creating this continuous effect already on the horizontal section of this texture. Now, as we keep moving, we're now going to start filling up the bottom and top side of the texture. Now, as you place these objects at the top and bottom of the image, especially once you copy them to the top, you may actually start to see some clashing elements. So basically elements that are too big and they're overlapping each other. If that happens, you actually need to stop what you're doing. You have to go back to the source. So for example, if you're pasting the excess of pixels from the bottom of the image at the top and is the top that's now clashing with the right side, you have to go back, you have to delete the ones at the top, go back to the bottom ones and scale down those objects until the excess of pixels that you pasted at the top is now clear from all sides. So this takes a little bit of tweaking and that's the nature of creating a tileable texture. It's very rarely there you're going to create something that's going to work right from the get-go and that's completely normal. Just make sure that you keep your layers active, make sure to keep copies as turned off layers and you'll be fine. So now that you have all sides actually created in this way, one more tip that I want to give you is that when you're selecting and copying or cutting and pasting to the other sections of the square, make sure that you have your selections very well placed because even one pixel of a difference, it's going to create a jagged kind of match once you're trying to tile these textures or tile the texture. So that is actually the only caveat on working with Procreate is that it's not going to be very intuitive as Photoshop or other applications and being able to see exactly where you're selecting, try to cut and pasting on the other side. So now really the final thing as you've covered all of these sides and corners of your tileable texture is that you may notice that the middle section may look a little bit empty or too sparse with a few gaps. So now all that you have to do really is to duplicate a few more of your hero layers and just start filling in the middle of your texture. In this case here for some of the lemons, I've scaled them down in order to have even more visual interest by not only varying the texture of the lemons, but also their sizes. And now here's the final result. As you can see, I can paste that onto a much bigger canvas and have a seamless texture for any products that I may want to apply this design. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews and speed paint videos and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen there's more content for you to learn on Procreate and a video that may actually interest you to watch a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.
Tchau.